What's up everybody, in today's video we're going to talk about 30 Nintendo Switch games that I recommend that you can buy physically. Before we get in today's video, we're going to share a quick promo for another of my fellow YouTubers and they are going to tell you all about their channel and their channel is Retro Rivals which I will leave a link to in the description down below. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to them and let them tell you about their awesome YouTube channel. Here we go. Line! Okay. Line please. Hey, we're Retro Rivals. Are you getting a little tired of GameCube? I, I haven't even played GameCube. If you are, and you want to check out something different, here's what we have to offer. A little of this. Or a little bit of this. And a tiny bit of this. Or how about that? As you can see, we take gaming very seriously. We're professionals. Don't try this at home. Unless you have a camera. Just a few quick disclaimers before we get into the list. First off, there are 30 games here, so I am not going to talk about each game very long. And because of the short amount of time I'm going to talk about each game, you may or may not see any gameplay or B-roll. It really just depends. So please keep that in mind. Also, these are all games that you can buy physically that are not limited releases so i'm not covering any limited run physical releases in this video we'll save that for another video and if this video does well and you want to see more nintendo switch recommendations then i will make a follow-up video with even more and i may even do a video about releases that i have digitally that i don't have physical copies of as well with that disclaimer out of the way let's jump in Let's kick things off with Yonder the Cloud Catcher Chronicles. This is a very chill and relaxing game. It really kind of reminds me of a game like Stardew Valley. You're just exploring this very relaxing open world. You're doing a lot of farming and different things like that. It's not really a game where you're going to be stressed out. You're not ever really in any danger. It's just a nice, chill, relaxing game. Victor Vran Overkill Edition. This is a really badass game that you can play cooperatively with another player and it's really going to remind you of a game like Diablo, except I might actually like this a little bit better Dia than Diablo. Feel free to come at me in the comments. And it has a soundtrack from Motorhead. Motorhead did the music for this game. It's a really fun, really awesome game, especially if you sit down and play it cooperatively. Speaking of awesome soundtracks, Val Ferris has an amazing and badass heavy metal instrumental soundtrack while you play it. This is a very similar game to games like Contra. It's extremely hard. It's a run and gun game, but you also have melee attacks as well. It's extremely difficult. It's very brutal and it's just badass and so metal. So Unbox Newbie's Adventure is a little hidden gem 3D platformer, which I'm going to cover even deeper in a future video. You actually take control of a box and you platform around these various 3D environments with pretty unique controls. It's a fun game. I recommend checking it out if you've never heard of it or played it. Tiny Barbarian DX. This is an old school 2D platformer game. It's extremely hard. I've, I don't think I've made it past the third level in this game. This is a game that will kick your ass, but if you're a fan of old school 2D platformers, then you are going to have a lot of fun with Tiny Barbarian DX, and you can also play it cooperatively with a second player, which is a nice bonus. The End is Nigh is a very, very difficult game that plays almost like Super Meat Boy. As a matter of fact, I think it was developed by the same developer as Super Meat Boy. I could be wrong about that. I haven't looked into it. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments down below. But it is a very, very fast moving game with quick levels, instant death game. So you, you know, you'll kick back into the level immediately. There is a ton of levels in this game. It is brutally difficult. So if you like hard games like Super Meat Boy, then check out The End is Nigh. 
Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy is a game that originally released during the GameCube era. I played it originally on the GameCube. It was re-released and remastered on modern consoles and it is an amazing game basically plays like a 3d zelda game when you're sphinx and when you're the mummy it is a very unique puzzle game highly recommend sphinx and the cursed mummy if you are a fan of roguelike or roguelite games then you need to check out sparklight this is a very very fun roguelike game where you're dropped down onto a planet and you have to fight and explore and, and, and take down bosses. It's pretty hard, but it's a lot of fun, and you can also play this one cooperatively, so I highly recommend Sparklight. Slain Back From Hell. I'm pretty sure this is the same developer as Val Ferris, as this is also a brutal game with a brutally awesome heavy metal soundtrack. This game is more melee focused, and, I, and it's also more difficult than Val Ferris, but it is a badass game so if you like Val Ferris or games like this that are difficult 2d platformers then you need to check out Slain Back From Hell it sort of reminds me of uh, Ghosts and Goblins so if you like Ghosts of Goblins then you want to check this game out Salt and Sanctuary the best thing I can say to describe Salt and Sanctuary is that it is a 2d Dark Souls game that is exactly what this is if you like Dark Souls or games like it, then you gotta check out Salt and Sanctuary because it's really gonna give you that Dark Souls experience from a 2D perspective. Extremely hard game, and you can also play this one co-op, so check it out. Regions of Ruin is a 2D open world game. I've heard this game described as a 2D Skyrim. It's a lot of fun. There is a bit of a learning curve to it, but once you really dig into this game, it can be a lot of fun. There's a ton of content, there's a lot to do. So if you're looking for a game that might remind you of a 2D version of Skyrim, then check out Regions of Ruin. Rad Rogers Radical Edition is a 2D action run and gun platformer with a mature sense of humor. As a matter of fact, it's rated M because of the sense of humor. It's a pretty funny game. It's pretty fun. Highly recommend checking it out, especially if you like 2D run and gun games. And if you like mature humor, then you're going to want to check out Rad Rogers Radical Edition. Portal Knights. If you're a fan of Minecraft or games like that, then you're going to like Portal Knights. Now, me personally, I don't really like Minecraft that much, but I love Portal Knights. And the reason that I love Portal Knights and I don't like Minecraft that much is because Portal Knights has more of an emphasis on combat and exploration than Minecraft does, and it's better. It's done better in this game. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of options for building, too, if that's your kind of thing, but there's also a whole quest you can embark on and it's just an awesome game so if you like games like minecraft but you want more combat and exploration then check out portal knights poi explorers edition this is another 3d platforming hidden gem on the switch which i'm going to cover in a future video it is a 3d platformer it's a lot of fun i never hear anybody talk about this game it might give you some Super Mario 64 vibes or vibes from other 3D platformers of that era. So if you're a fan of 3D platformers, then you got to check out Poi Explorers Edition. Owlboy. What a beautiful game. Beautiful, beautiful game with an amazing soundtrack, amazing gameplay. It's short, but it's short and sweet. Has a fantastic story. I actually... Not gonna lie, I actually teared up a bit in the story in this game. And that does not happen to me very often, especially with a 2D game. But it is a 2D, sort of Metroidvania style game. It's extremely epic, extremely fun, kind of difficult. And it's a game that I highly recommend to anybody that is a fan of the genre. Darkest Dungeon. This is an extremely brutal and dark RPG game. It's not really an exploration based RPG game though. You have like a hub world and then you dive into the dungeon with your team and it has permadeath just like a game like Fire Emblem. It's extremely hard. It's a very dark and depressing game but if you like difficult games that also have RPG elements to them then you're gonna love Darkest Dungeon. 
Moonlighter, this is an amazing game. It's also a, it's a roguelike, but it's a roguelike with a twist. By day, you are a shop owner. You manage a shop for adventurers to come to buy things for their adventures. But at night, you actually dive into the dungeon yourself to get new merchandise and new weapons and new gear to sell in your shop as well as for yourself and to get gold to upgrade your shop and upgrade your town. So it's almost like a shop sim combined with a roguelike dungeon crawler and it's a lot of fun. So check out Moonlighter. Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom. Now I know this isn't necessarily a game that a lot of people don't know about. It's a fairly popular game but it's a game i don't really hear people talk about and it's a masterpiece it's one of the best 2d indie games i've ever played it is fantastic it is a metroidvania it's a spiritual successor to the wonder boy series everything about this game is quality from the graphics to the gameplay to the world and level design the music if you have not played monster boy and the cursed kingdom this is probably my most recommended game in today's video, so be sure and check it out. It'll Do 2. Now, this is a sequel to the first game, It'll Do, so I would recommend both of them. But It'll Do is basically a Zelda-like game that plays sort of like games like uh, A Link to the Past and Zelda games from that era, except it does have more of a sort of 3D art style to it. It's kind of got a cartoony art style, but it's a really fun game. If you love Zelda games, especially top-down Zelda games, then you will really enjoy It'll Do or even It'll Do 2. Helmut the Badass from Hell is another dungeon crawling roguelike game, but it has some pretty unique gameplay mechanics to it. It's a very, very fun game. It's pretty difficult. It sort of has like a twin stick shooter style to the combat, and you can also play this cooperatively. So if you're a fan of twin stick shooters or a fan of roguelike games or dungeon crawlers, then you need to check out Helmut the Badass from Hell. Also, that cover art is amazing. Forager, the best way I know how to describe Forager is a combination of The Legend of Zelda, Terraria, and Minecraft. This game is fantastic. When I first started playing this, I got horribly addicted to it. I binge played this game and I loved every single moment. So if you are a fan of The Legend of Zelda or Minecraft or Terraria or all three, or even if you're not a fan of Minecraft or for Terraria and you're just a Zelda fan, I would recommend checking out Forager. Dungreed is a really, really fun retro style roguelike Metroidvania game that has a lot of fun gameplay mechanics. You get different weapons every run. You, you descend underground from your base town every run. There's a lot of fun boss fights, fun enemies. It's a great game. I was very addicted to it. It has a ton of replayability. So if you're a fan of 2D roguelike Metroidvania games, then you gotta check out Dungreed and it can also be played cooperatively. Children of Morta is what I would best describe as a roguelike Diablo game of sorts, except there's not really loot, you don't really find weapons, but there are a large cast of characters to choose from that are playable, and each one feels totally different from one another, and each one has their own independent skill tree, so there's a lot of replayability here because each character feels different whereas in some games like this characters feel kind of similar but you can also play this one cooperatively it's a fantastic game if you like Diablo if you like roguelike games or if you like dungeon crawlers then you're gonna love Children of Morta. Cave Story Plus now a lot of people know about Cave Story it's not necessarily an obscure game or anything like that but at the same time I don't really hear anybody talk about it and you can play the plus version on the switch Cave Story is a fantastic indie Metroidvania game. It really was one of the premier indie games. It's really one of the indie games that sort of propelled the indie game genre. And the fact that you can play it on the Switch and give it get it physically is fantastic. So if you've never played Cave Story Plus, I highly recommend it. Cat Quest. What a fun game. It's simplistic, it's easy. It's fairly basic, but you get to play as a cat. You get to go around an overworld and fight enemies and explore and loot and level up. It's sort of an action RPG. 
and it's just a lot of fun. And there's also a part two, which I have not played yet, but I've heard it's even better than part one. So check out the Cat Quest series on the Nintendo Switch. Bendy and the Ink Machine. This is a first person horror game that is kind of like a cross between Bioshock and old school like black and white Disney with a horror twist. It's a very fun game. It's pretty creepy, but beware there is a game breaking bug in this game that I don't know that they've patched yet. So if you do buy Bendy and the Ink Machine, I highly recommend looking into the game breaking bug so that you can try to avoid it. Other than that, it's an awesome game, so check it out, especially if you're a fan of horror games. Battle Chasers Night War is a turn-based RPG based off of, I believe, a graphic novel series. This game is a lot of fun. It has a really, really fun turn-based combat system. I mean, I'm usually not much of a turn-based combat kind of guy in RPG games, but I really like this one. Played it and beat it. It was great. It's not too long. It doesn't overstay its welcome like a lot of RPG games do. And it has a great cast of characters, so check out Battle Chasers Night War. Agalos. This one, at least when I bought it, you could only get it physically from Europe, but the Switch is region free, so you can buy the PAL version of this game. It was relatively cheap when I bought it. I don't know if it still is now, but Agalos is a fantastic retro style Metroidvania game that was most certainly inspired by games like Monster Boy and Wonder Boy and games from that, games like that, retro games like that. Um, really love this game. It's pretty difficult, but I did eventually beat it and I enjoyed every moment of it. So check out Agalos. Adventure Time Pirates of the Enchiridion. This is a turn-based RPG that takes place in the Adventure Time universe. It's a pretty fun RPG. I love the art style. I love the humor. I love the fact that you get to explore the world in Adventure Time. The combat's pretty fun. The only thing that's a problem is there's a lot of performance issues in the game i don't they may have patched them since i played i'm not sure but i was able to overlook the performance issues and i was actually having a lot of fun so if you're a fan of adventure time or turn-based rpgs then check out adventure time pirates of the enchiridion 88 Heroes 98 Heroes Edition. This is a strange game, but it's a lot of fun. It's also a really hard game to describe. Basically, you have 88 heroes, there's 88 levels. You have 88 minutes to beat every level, if I remember correctly. Plus, this game has 10 bonus levels and 8 new levels added. It's a weird game. There are literally 98 different heroes. Some of them are completely useless. Some of them are useful. You're basically going to be, I think every time you die and every time you play a new level, you have a different hero. And so every time you play the game, it's going to be a completely different experience. And it might be easier or harder depending on what heroes you end up with. Very unique. It's a fun game. It doesn't always work the way you want it to, but I did have a lot of fun playing this one. I wasn't able to beat it though, because it's pretty damn hard, but it's definitely unique. So check out 88 Heroes, 98 Heroes Edition. Well, there you have it, folks. 30 games that I recommend you check out that you can get physically on the Nintendo Switch. Let me know in the comments down below if you've played any of the games that I covered in today's video and what you think about them. Also, let me know in the comments down below if there are any physical Switch games that are sort of obscure, maybe not talked about a lot, that you recommend that I cover in a future video. Like I said, if this video does well, I will probably do a follow-up or even multiple follow-ups. So let me know if you would like to see more of these videos in the description down below. And yes, I know a lot of these were indie games, but you know what? Indie games are awesome and I'm not sorry. And besides, a lot of awesome indie games on the Switch just don't get enough recognition that they deserve and that's another reason why i wanted to do this video i wanted to bring light to other awesome indie games that people don't talk about anyways again if you enjoyed this video hit that like button really helps out means a lot to me and as always folks stay safe out there keep playing games and having a good time i'll catch you all in the next video later if you made it to the end of this video thank you so much you're freaking awesome and if you enjoyed it hit that like button share it with your friends and family check out all the social media links in the description down below and if you want to see more retro wolf 88 videos here's a couple more for you now if you'll excuse me i'm gonna go play some more video games later <laughs>